Hey, welcome back to Not a Sermon, Just a Thought. Toward the end of his gospel, in the scene where Jesus is arrested in the garden, Mark includes an oddly out-of-place incident. It's one that seems more appropriate, I don't know, to an Adam Sandler movie. Jesus and his disciples have, have retreated to the Garden of Gethsemane. His earnest prayers to be, de- to be delivered from the cross have been answered with silence. The three disciples closest to him, Peter, James, and John, have slumbered through his struggle. As he awakens them the third time, another disciple, Judas, appears, followed closely by an armed squad of temple guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas greets him, Rabbi, kisses him, and then hard-handed men manhandle Jesus into submission. One of the faithful swings a sword, narrowly missing the neck of the high priest's servant. An ear falls to the ground. Outnumbered, unfamiliar with fighting, unaccustomed to bloodshed, the courage of even the bravest disciple falters. They all flee the garden, leaving Jesus in the hands of his captors. The scene is tense with betrayal and violence and fear. And then Mark writes this, A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus when they seized him. He fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Why would Mark include that clownish aside in an otherwise tense and serious scene? I mean, he's not one to waste words. His is the shortest of the four Gospels. He includes only four of Jesus' parables. He likes action better than talk. And he doesn't spend a single syllable telling us about Jesus' miraculous birth, and yet he's got ink for a moment of ill-timed slapstick? Well, there are other indecencies like this in Scripture. Noah, inebriated and undressed in his tent. Uh, Saul, slain in the spirit, exposed in prophesying. The church in Laodicea, self-sufficient, impressed with itself, and dressed in the emperor's clothes. There is, though, something uniquely familiar about this incident in Mark. A garden, deception, nakedness, fear. Feels like we've been here before, long, long time ago. I heard you in the garden, Adam said, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Maybe Mark isn't trying to be funny at all. Adam, Eve, and Mark's young man all lived the bad dream people sometimes sweat through, showing up in a public place in nothing but what the good Lord gave you. Lots of interpretations of that common dream theme have been offered, but you don't need an expert to explain it. It's about our fear of having all our faults and failings exposed. It's about being vulnerable, and vulnerability scares us all. Adam, Eve, the young man in Mark, you, me. And so much of what we do and say and how we live is a desperate running for cover. We, we hide behind expensive possessions and impressive positions and practiced pretense. We disguise our faults behind social media masks. We camouflage our sin in the shade of good deeds or doctrinal precision or busy work at church. And none of it, as faithful as it makes us seem, is any more befitting than the fig leaf aprons Adam and Eve stitched together in, in the garden. In Genesis chapter 3, after God found them hiding in humiliation, Moses writes, The Lord God clothed them. And then at the other end of the Bible, in Revelation 3.18, John promised a scantily clad church that God himself would give them white clothes to cover their shame. If God can weave a universe out of nothing, if he can outfit an autumn mountainside in an exquisite tapestry of color, if he can knit together a human in its mother's womb, do we doubt his ability to clothe us, cover us with his own tailor-made righteousness? We've got to stop hiding from God and from each other. It's easy to be intimidated by people all decked out in the, religi- the latest religious fashions. Unless, unless what they're wearing is designed by God, it's a cheap knockoff. And if the clothes that cover their shame come from God, they don't, they don't have anything to brag about anyway. On his deathbed, Luther said, we are all beggars telling other beggars where to find bread. He was right. We are also, every one of us, the young man in the garden, fleeing naked and afraid. Not a sermon, just a thought.